Imagine with me for a moment, you've got a guitar player. And this guitar player only plays his instrument with the band. He never practices on his own. How do you imagine that guitar player is going to do when it's time to actually play? Probably pretty poorly. But for sound techs, that's the normal way of life. We have to practice with somebody else until virtual sound check. So we can record and then play back our tracks through the console in the venue without having to have the musicians there. This is a game changer for your audio skills. So today I'm gonna to show you how to set it up and the ways that you can do it with the PreSonus Studio Live Series 3 consoles. So let's jump in. Hey, if you're new here, my name is James and I help sound tech save the day by eliminating distractions. So if you're a sound tech that wants to take their skills to the next level, go ahead and hit subscribe and don't bother dinging the bell. You don't need more notifications in your life. So the Studio Live has three different ways that we can perform in and out functions digitally on our console. The first one is over USB to a computer. And that's really handy because it's like 64 channels back and forth. And I could be wrong, but that's a whole lot of channels that you can do over USB. The second way you can do it is over PreSonus's AVB network. And if you've got a Mac as your host computer, that just uses an ethernet cable and your Mac recognizes the console as an audio interface. It's pretty cool. The third way is with the built-in SD card. And that's the one that we're gonna take a look at first. So over here, we've got a live recording section and we've got a little SD card thing going on. So I'm pop this out. You've got to get the right type of SD card. So check out PreSonus's website for ones that they recommend. But if you get one that's not up to their speed recommendations, it's not going to record as many channels as you want it to. So when you hit this, you hit edit. I've already loaded something. Let me go to sound check. And we can do a speed test on this SD card. So we hit speed test, it's gonna process, and it's going to write and read from the card to see how much you can do at a time. I shouldn't have actually done this for you because now I have to wait for it to do it. I guess I could tell a joke while we're waiting. Where do dads keep their dad jokes? In a database. I know you British people aren't really gonna get that because you say data. I get it, yep. Lost in translation, sorry. Okay, speed test is done. It can record 14 tracks on this card. I'm not exactly sure why, because I've recorded more than that on this card before, but that's what it's telling me now. If you need to format it, that can be helpful as well. There's already some stuff on here. I'll show you what that does. If we're going to create a new session, I named this one console review and my performance check one, two, one, two. You can see that. You tap on there, you can rename it. That's how it goes. I'm gonna call this performance check one, two, three. Somebody's gotta lift something. And now we're going to create. It says, don't remove the SD card. Don't remove the SD card. If you're old enough to remember when floppy disks were used on a computer and had a little light on the front, that's kind of the same thing. So now we're able to record. We can arm our tracks either by selecting all, which means that every channel on here is going to get dumped to the SD card. That also includes the left right bus or the main left and right. So we can select channels to not record as well. So let's say we don't wanna record the talk back or uh, there's some other channel that we just really don't wanna record. We can deselect those here if we want, but you have to record arm something and you should do that. Now we can hit record. Hopefully it lets us, even though it only told us we could do 14 tracks, I armed 32 and it's going. You can see the time going. And the thing about it is it automatically does the record lock. So if I wanna hit stop, either on purpose or accident, it won't do that. I have to hit record lock off before it will stop. So now it's saving and we're there. Now, if I had a band playing at this point, it would do that and it would record onto the SD card. Now I could go back to the beginning and hit play and hit all channels to SD input now I've switched all of my input channels to the SD card input. Quickly and easily, I can play back my sound check. This works really well when it works really well, but there's a couple things that don't work really well on it, and I wanna give you a heads up so that you don't get frustrated like I was. The jog function doesn't work for me. So I hit jog, I move around, and then it plays it for about three seconds, and then it does nothing, right? 
um, even if it's down at one second, it doesn't really work for me. It'll play for a few seconds and then stop. This is more apparent on longer sessions. You know, I can load up a different one and show you. I hit save and close, but it's still on SD card input. Oh, it switched back all of a sudden. We're gonna load session. We're gonna hit JHS pedals rehearsal, number one, I'm gonna hit play. So when I was recording, I hit record for a second, hit stop. So you'll hear some weird stuff uh, for some of the behind the scenes things. So uh, we hit all channels to SD input. So, yes, that was weird. Uh, then you'll start to hear stuff as they begin. But if I hit jog and I try to, well, let's tell you that it, there's stuff going on. Wait for it. Okay, so we do have audio coming through. It's working, all that. But if I go to jog and I try to move ahead because I want to go to a later part, didn't really do anything even though it's playing in the same spot. I hit stop. That's not really that spot anymore. So I hit play and it plays for a few seconds. It says it's playing and then it stops. If you need to jog around or if you're trying to rewind to get your toms dialed in just right because they played one fill and you really want to do that, the SD card is not the option for you at this point in time. Hopefully they fix that in a firmware update. What else are you going to do if this doesn't work great. If you're just playing it straight through and you're fine with that, this can work fine. But a better option, and one that works brilliantly, I might add, is the Capture app on your computer. So let's check it out. Hit New Session. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna name it this. And we can see here that we've already linked our channel names on the console to the channel names inside Capture. If we wanted to undo that, we could name all these something different. But if we hit it and the names aren't the same, it's gonna ask us which one we wanna keep. In general, you're probably gonna to wanna to keep the ones that are on the console already. Unless you made all your names in Capture and wanted to move it over that way, you could do that too. We can hit record and this will do it. It automatically hits record lock for you. So you have to unlock it before you can hit stop. I can mash stop or hit spacebar on the keyboard. It's not gonna stop accidentally. You have to hit unlock now. You can hit stop at the end. Uh, it color codes them according to what you have your channels color coded, which is kind of nice. We can also add markers as we go. So let's say I have a marker here and I know there's a tom fill that I want to come back to and mess with. I can hit that marker there. I can double click it and name it and move back and forth between different markers. If I add a different one by this button over here. So we can go back and forth to different markers and we can even create a loop section if we draw a little in and out arrow and double click it, it will loop that section of playback. Now, one other really nice feature is this button right here. It's the all digital in. So if I hit this button, let's say that on my console, I'm already on analog inputs. So give me a second while I switch that over. So everybody's on analog. I hit this button and everything switches to USB. So all throughout here, they're all on USB. I hit this again and now they're back to analog or wherever they were before, if that's network or analog or whatever your input device is for that. If it was already on USB, it stays on USB. So that's super handy. It gets you back and forth between your live inputs from on stage to your recorded inputs that are on the computer. Really, really helpful. Uh, you can see your list of markers here. If you want, you can hit sound check if you want. You can mute channels or solo them. Uh, playback is pretty easy. If you need to zoom in and out quickly, uh, you can use your scroll wheel on the mouse here in the timeline bar, and that will let you zoom in and out. You can drag it around if you want, or dragging it up and down works as well. So there's that. Uh, you can see all your meters down here. You've got a record enable all button. So if you hit this, none of your channels are record enabled. If they're all red, you can do that. If you wanna leave some out and be like, I'm not gonna record the bass player right now, you can turn that off if you'd like. Hopefully this works much better for you than the onboard capture, especially because you can actually scroll and move around. Another option that might help you is when you have an ability to record at a certain point and you don't have the computer there to play back, but you can still load the files from the SD card on the console into the computer 
and then load them into Capture there so that you can play them back. This makes things really easy, even if you don't have the computer there to record right when the show's going or right when Soundcheck is there. Maybe somebody brings your laptop later and you can plug it in and it's good to go. So here's one from Pedals the Musical. So we can go to the fuzz phase breakdown, hit this marker, hit play. So we can go there, we can go over to Octavia. And we can get to where we need to quickly and easily. It would be awesome if they had this function working well on the console, but you gotta work with what you got. Now, I don't think that it's possible to use this with a different console. So I think it has to be a PreSonus audio interface or console to work with this. Maybe Windows Audio would give you some options, but I don't have that on hand to show you or I would give it a shot. So there's all your options. You can do that. Very easy to use. You can solo and mute stuff if you want stuff to go around, go away. That's how it goes. Now, if you're gonna use a digital audio workstation, you can use any of them you like. Reaper, Logic, Pro Tools, Mixbus if you want, but the one that works the best is Studio One because they're compatible. They've got some extra features that are really helpful. Let me show you how to set them up. The first thing you need to make sure that you have is your options set up correctly. Uh, on your song setup, you're gonna set up your IO, and on your inputs, you're gonna make sure that you've got all 32 inputs available. So we're gonna create these inputs. I've got stereo channels and mono channels. Hit apply, hit okay. And now we can set this up for input channel one to go to input channel one. We can select everybody and we want our inputs. We're gonna to go to the very first one and we're gonna assign input one first and then we're going to say assign in ascending order. Now, all of them are going to one, two, three, etc. On this first output, I assign the output. Console one, now what I'm gonna do is assign in ascending order. And now console one and input one are there. So. When I'm in USB mode, uh, the playback here will come from the computer over here. So now I can hit this. Same thing with the playback controls. We've got the timeline along the top. We can create a loop marker here, double click it to enable it. And we hit play and everything should show up on our console. So we can see we're in the middle of Tone bender. So one of the really cool things about Studio One is that it knows how to remote control everything on the console from inside the computer. That means your preamp, your phantom power, your polarity switch, and even all the channel processing. So what we do is we go over to this gear wheel and we select audio device controls. Now on every audio device, we can see the gain, you can see the phantom power and the polarity switch. You can also pop open the fat channel. So everything that's on here also shows up on here. So we've got our EQ, a compressor, high pass filter and gate. We can do all that from the computer. It's almost like having the remote control features of universal control and the playback features of capture all in one. So it's really handy to use Studio One for your virtual sound check device. That's it for this video. I hope you have an awesome time practicing mixing. If you want tips and my starting places for different instruments, you can check out this playlist up here. And if you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit subscribe and don't ding the bell because you don't need any more notifications in your life. Be sure to download my sound check checklist. You can find that through the link down in the description below. And remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time on Adoy Audio.